Well, I hope the new year for you guys is better than last year was for me. I, I have nowhere to go but up, so uh, 2020 is going to be better, I would think, and knock on wood. This story, this video is about the blob off the coast of New Zealand that was quote unquote just discovered. Um, people are, many people are falling on the bandwagon. It's volcanism creating this blob. Um, and scientists are baffled. Uh, anytime I see the, the headline, scientists are baffled, uh, um, I know that's a lie. Uh, scientists always have ideas and conclusions. They're not completely stumped on this. If my subscribers are not completely stumped, if I'm not completely stumped, then how can scientists be completely stumped? Uh, those poor, coerced, intimidated individuals. You look at other maps uh, of the region on temperature anomaly maps, and you can see quite frequently Australia has a blob over it. It's a temperature blob. It's a deviation from normal or what's been a 20-year, 30-year average. And you can see that the northern hemisphere always seems to be uh, warmer than the southern hemisphere. But I do believe this is summertime uh, image from the Northern Hemisphere. So if that blob ships, ships over just a few hundred miles, there it is, right off the coast of New Zealand. Now, I want to thank the person that made this video. I'm going to see if I can find a link to this guy's channel. Um, I want to show you some of his video he made on this, but he, he puts a lot of texts in, in the picture so I'll see if I can cut out a piece but I really want to give him credit and I don't want to get into a copyright situation this is fair use because uh, we're providing an analysis and we're also providing a critique of that video here is a global deviation map from December 18th look down to your lower left and what do you see? You see a blob, okay? And it's this one's like almost over New Zealand. Uh, the blob has shifted to the right a little bit. And we'll show you, we're gonna show you what's going on. And so even when you go to a different temperature anomaly map, uh, you can see Australia always is posting some higher than average temperatures and sometimes leads the Southern Hemisphere in that in that description or that situation. So we know it's not volcanism. Uh, we reason we know it is because A, the surface area of water is larger than California. So if you had a super eruption heating the ocean like this, you would have bubbles coming up out of the water. You would have um, ash <laughs> bubbling up in the ocean. You would have seismicity for New Zealand would be going through the roof. Going through the roof. And uh, this would be a super eruption that's underwater. So the seismograms are not indicating even a small eruption. So we know it's not volcanism related. And so then we look at the currents, the water currents. This is what any baffled scientist would do. And, you, you know, immediately even my subscribers will look at this map and say, whoa, where that blob is, there's a counterclockwise rotation. They're set up by the left to right flow of the current of Antarctica and the right to left flow of of the equatorial current that, that takes the current from South America and uh, takes it over to Indonesia and Northern Australia. So you have a current going right to left on top and a current going left to right on the bottom. Put a ball in your hand, move one hand one direction, one hand the other direction, You're the ball will spin. And that's what's happening. We have an eddy there a very strong one that's not permitting the heated parts of that blob, the heated parts of the southern hemisphere to mix. 
So hot water isn't being carried away to the coast of South America. The hot water is being recirculated and recirculated and recirculated with very little mixing of colder water happening. Okay? So, but wait a minute. How does that explain such a temperature deviation? First thing I want to point out is this blob is five to six degrees above average. So it's not like you're looking at a hundred degree water. You're not going to go over there and be able to boil shrimp in that blob. It's five, six degrees above normal. So what would do that? What would do that? Well, the current we covered, but now comes the real culprit that is baffled scientists. First of all, I want to say the UV index in the area has been 16. Okay, now you may not think that means much, and if you're a scientist, it should mean everything. You know, uh, because this UV index, and here's living proof for those of you calling us a liar, uh, calling me a liar. Uh, the UV scale used to go to 10, 0 to 10. 10 was the highest we would get on planet Earth, and then something happened in 2004. Actually, we were posting extreme UVs in 2003, 2002. People were getting injured. People were dying on hikes. Plants were burning. We were having fires in, in that solar maximum of 2001 to 2003. Very hot temperatures. And what the EPA do and the National Weather Service they raised the index. Yes, they did. They raised it. For, they added another category. Instead of very high UV, they have extreme. And extreme is 11 and above. And they should have another category above extreme now. Because 16 and 17, I mean, if 11 is extreme, what the hell is 16 or 17? I would call that deadly. That's what I would call it deadly ultraviolet from extreme to deadly and extremes deadly but you know this 11 and up stuff is for the birds because it fails to give you a quantified result of that index it's like magnitudes of an earthquake if all of a sudden you know, magnitude 11 and up, and, and you know we're getting a magnitude 16. I mean, how do you, how do you perceive and quantify what that really means and what what their implications really are? So we have 16 and 17 ultraviolet. Most baffled scientists will go, hmm, boy, that's pretty freaking extreme. You know, so you look at your oven, okay. You turn it on as high as it will go. You know, you used to cook on very high, but now you're on high, and now you're trying to go above high, you know. And you put your food in the oven, and you expect it not to burn. You're a moron. That's, I can't think of anything else. You're severely mentally disabled. If you don't think extreme oven temperatures would burn food. So when it happens on Earth, why are people so baffled? And that's because scientists are coerced, scientists are threatened, scientists are bribed, and scientists is a really lousy profession to be in right now. So somebody sent this video about the blob, a lot of text on here, but again, I wanted to get to the part that shows you the circulation currents involved with the wind, because it kind of corresponds with the water currents as well. And I'll see if I can leave you a link to this video so I don't get myself into a copyright situation, but this is all fair use. And this is for educational purposes, and, and we're also critiquing the video that you see in front of you. And video critiques are allowed. We're not going to show the entire video because we want you to go to this link and see it for yourself. But you can see how the currents uh, are responding and how they also would seem to support a counterclockwise whirlpool the size of California.
This does not permit mixing with colder water. This does not carry away the heat to South America or Indonesia. This keeps the heat in a central location in the middle of that counterclockwise rotation. This is going to lead to a lot of things. It's going to lead to a lot of dead animals. That's what it's going to lead to. Uh, so don't be surprised if you start seeing local papers talking about stuff going on in Tasmania, but also New Zealand itself. A lot of dead animals you can see. So the sun, we, we know what, you know, then the scientists are like, well, you know, how in the heck are we getting extreme UV like this? And people say, well, the ozone is depleted. And th there are patchy areas where there's holes in the ozone. But the ozone isn't completely depleted for entire planet Earth. So what we do know is that cosmic rays on Earth hit an all-time high this month. Oh, wait a minute, an all-time high in cosmic rays? Most cosmic rays come from outer space. How are we getting an all-time high? And if we're getting an all-time high and gravitationally focused and magnetically drawn in cosmic rays, what do you think the sun's doing? The sun has also all-time high of cosmic rays passing into and through its corona. When these cosmic rays collide, when they lose electrons, fireworks happen, okay? And you create extreme UV, you create UVB, UVC, you create all kinds of energy that does nothing to cool the earth. And to prove it, you just take a picture of the sun with a filter. You know, yellow orange filter you take a picture of the Sun it should look yellow this one's low on the horizon so yeah you get to see a yellow Sun but nine times out of ten what you see is a still a white hot Sun as hot as you would ever imagine But what's going on in Australia with these apocalyptic fires does not heed well for New Zealand. New Zealand is next. And New Zealand's our small island. They're windswept. You're, you're going to burn these entire islands if you're not ready for the fire season. And the government of New Zealand needs to have 30 tankers loaded with water sitting on a runway now. When the first sign of a fire happens, these things don't have to dive bomb the fire with that many tankers. You can fly in formation and just make it rain from 2,000, 3,000 feet. That's, that's the other way to deal with the situation. 